Hi, this is Rebecca from Rebecca's Sewing Corner, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, winding up some thread. Now, usually um, I like to buy uh, a spool of thread, so like this, a spool of thread, um, that really matches my project. Um, and I use it in my serger, in the left needle, when I'm sewing so that the thread matches very nicely. And then I really like to use it um, in my cover stitch machine when I'm hemming. Um, but there I need actually two spools or two sets of threads to, um, to hem with a double needle. Or even three if you wanted to use the three needle setup. Now I used to um, used to wind thread onto my bobbin and I found that was causing me a lot of problems. So even if I put the caps on top, I had a problem that the quality of my, my bobbins was um, causing causing some problems. So the threads were getting caught on, on ridges here. Um, they weren't, it wasn't unwinding very nicely. And on top of that, when I put my bobbin on the um, spool holders of my cover stitch machine, um, it would just get stuck, right? So it had it had no movement, it had no play, which meant the thread couldn't, you know, just sort of bob off it very nicely. And um, I figured out that even though these spools that we have here are actually meant to be thrown away after use, um, that they they're actually a little bit nicer made than my plastic bottom here. So I had the idea that I wanted to wind my thread onto a spool, but I was looking for an easy way to do it. And to be honest with you, I was doing it by hand for a while and that got kind of tedious. I wanted to have my husband rig something up for my little um, screw gun. And he came and said the diameter of my spools is too, um, too far off from anything that he had, so he couldn't rig up something for me uh, easily. And then I had seen some solutions of hot gluing the um, spools onto your bobbin so that you could actually wind them on your sewing machine. And I thought that was kind of a neat idea, but then I realized, well, if I do that, I'll have the bobbin still in the way on my on my spool stands, etc. So maybe I'd, and I don't not sure if I really wanted to hot glue this on. Then I realized I have a new passion, a new friend in my sewing room um, that's called let's say it has a brand name I believe in the United States called Blue Tack, and uh, here where I live. It's actually this product, uh, which I picked up at a hardware store. You can get them, get it pretty much anywhere. And um, it's a reusable kind of sticky putty that um, doesn't stick to your fingers very much, but it, it holds things in place. So I've already taken a blob off of, off of that package. And um, for this, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a little noodle out of it. Um, not so long, just over maybe just over an inch, an inch and a half, so about three centimeters long. And I'm going to put it on one end of my spool. Now I'm going to purposely put it on the end that has this thread catcher thing because I want to have the thread catcher at the bottom next to my bobbin when I put all of this together. And when I put it on, I'm going to make sure that I'm putting it on on one of these ridges that you see. So I've taken the paper off that's usually there and I'm putting it on one of the ridges because I don't want it to fall into the, um, the, the gaps that you have here. So I'm just gonna push it on gently uh, once around and I'm gonna set it down. Well, I'm not gonna set it down so you can see what I'm doing, but I'm gonna then just try and line it up as nice as I can, the two holes with my bobbin and basically just push it down firm. Now, this will not give you a lasting join, um, but, you know, if I'm, I'm going to pull on it and push on it, and, and actually, you know, with that, um, it, it's pretty sturdy. And with that, actually, you're ready to go. So I'm going to um, put you guys on hold for a second, pull out my sewing machine, uh, and um, just give this a whirl. Okay, so here I am up at the top of my sewing machine and this is actually where my um, bobbins get wound and what I'm going to do is making sure I'm, I'm keeping the direction that the winding takes place uh, into account is I'm actually just gonna pull the thread into that little thread catcher that's already there pre-manufactured for me and that actually gives me a nice relatively sturdy hold when I um, when I put my spool with the bobbin 
onto my winder. And then I'm just gonna sort of backwards thread this a little bit through my um, normal bobbin winding setup. I already got that in the wrong way. So I'll take that back out. This is what you get for doing videos. Take that all the way back out. And actually I'll put it in through the winding setup first, which is probably the better idea. Then put it in that little thread catcher so that it's um, not gonna run away on you, which is relatively nice. Just wind it around twice. Set my uh, machine to wind bobbins and then make sure nothing's in the way. Now what I'm doing actually here today is I'm um, winding off a serger cone that I have um, standing back in my machine and I have it looped up through the uh, thread stand which you can't quite see up there at the top. And that actually is also helpful if you um, want to uh, wind a um, serger thread onto a spool like this. Um, otherwise you would be just using your, your standard um, spool holder, thread holder in, in your machine to, uh, to do this exercise. So I'm going to um, plug in and start up my machine and I'll show you one last thing to watch for. Okay, machine is plugged in and ready to go, turned on. And I'm just going to, um, so in this in this last hook, actually, I don't want to have it um, have my thread in there because I'm going to want to be able to control a little bit um, the, the positioning of my thread. So if I'm going to slowly get my machine started. And uh, here I do two things. First of all, I do, I'm a little bit of a control freak, so I do keep my finger on the, on the top of this um, just lightly so that it doesn't, fly off or, or get you know escape and the other thing I'm doing is I'm guiding my thread up and down on the spool so that it winds um, relatively evenly and by the reason that I do that is so that it's even but one thing you do need to pay attention to when you do do that is um, that you don't wind too fast otherwise you will end up um, cutting or burning your fingers while doing this so a moderate speed um, and, you know, that you feel comfortable with and just basically give it a go. Now I find this is um, really great for loading up a spool with uh, the thread so that you have um, two spools with thread. I like how it unwinds off of uh, my spools when I'm using my uh, cover stitch and uh, I, I think this is a really neat idea and what I like about it is, is it's not permanent. So let's just say we're done here. Then you can just take it off. You can cut your thread. And when you're completely done, you just take those two apart and you can take the putty, the sticky putty back, put it back in the package, and uh, you're ready to use that again. There is one last comment about um, winding threads is that supposedly threads do have a direction and that if you have wound them onto a spool, when you un wind and use them, they're actually now going in the reverse direction of how they were originally on a spool. And apparently they do generate more lint that way. So if you run your fingers along your threads back and forth, if you, you um, might be able to sense that in one direction it's smoother and in the backwards directions it's a little bit rougher. Um, so you know, I have a disclaimer that you know this could lint up your machine a little bit more if you're concerned about that then you can actually cross wind so you could wind it onto a spool like this put this spool into your machine and wind it onto the next one and then you would be sure that you have your threads going in the right direction so i hope you enjoyed this advice um, it's something i do now very often and uh, and for projects and either i'm winding um, thread off of my serger cones for uh, for the sewing machine if i have happened to have serger cones that perfectly match my project or I'm using it for having the second spool for hemming on my cover stitch. So thanks for watching my video at Rebecca's Sewing Corner and happy sewing.